Welcome back, everybody, for another deep dive with yours truly. Today, we're taking a look at a GoFundMe campaign that really piqued my interest. It's okay. called Please Support Our Courageous Investigators, organized by Teresa Crater. Interesting. What caught my attention is this. It's raising funds for a legal defense against the Transcendental Meditation Organization, mm -hmm. the TMO. The TMO. Wow, that's... Uh... Yeah. You wouldn't normally associate meditation with lawsuits, would you? Not really. What's the story there? Well, it seems that the TMO is actually suing 13 individuals and two whole entities. 13 individuals, huh? Yeah. But the GoFundMe campaign is really focusing on supporting three New Zealanders in particular. They got involved in an investigative project, kind of digging into the TMO, you know? Yeah, I see. And get this, they even created a video series called Conversations in the Hive yeah. to share their, uh, their findings. Conversations in the Hive. Yep. So what did they find? Something that got the TMO all riled up. Well, it must have been something pretty explosive because yeah. the TMO hit them with a lawsuit. Oh, wow. And it's already progressed quite a bit. It's at the point where they've filed a statement of legal defense. So they're laying out their side of the story. Exactly. That's their official response. But now they're moving into a phase called getting to discovery. And that's where the real costs start piling up. Getting to discovery, huh? Yeah. What does that even mean for these people, though? Sounds kind of intense. Well, it means that things are about to get very real. Like they're going to have to hand over tons of documents, emails, and potentially even answer questions under oath. Oh, wow. Yeah. And all of that requires serious legal expertise, which is why they're turning to GoFundMe for help. I can only imagine how I'd feel if I were suddenly slapped with a lawsuit from a huge organization. I'd be terrified. It would be pretty intimidating, that's for sure. Yeah. And that brings us to the whole David versus Goliath aspect of this. Mm -hmm. The TMO, from what I've read, has over $100 million in assets. Wow. $100 million. And they're going up against, you know, regular individuals, some of whom are struggling financially. Yeah, that's a huge power imbalance. It really is. Even if they're eventually cleared of any wrongdoing, the legal process itself could be incredibly draining. Financially and emotionally, probably. <laughs> exactly. So we've got the lawsuit, we've got the investigators, and we've got this urgent need for funds. But what were these investigators actually looking into? What did they find that got the TMO so riled up? Well, the GoFundMe campaign itself doesn't give too many details. Mm -hmm. But there's an opinion piece by David Laird embedded in the campaign. Laird, he spent 30 years at The Economist, by the way. Oh, wow. The Economist. Yeah. He's suggesting that this lawsuit might not actually be about the legal concerns they're claiming. Mm. You think there's something else going on? Well, Laird seems to think so. He argues that this might be more about silencing dissent than anything else. He points out that the TMO is going after them with claims of copyright infringement, trademark issues, even conspiracy. But there might be a bigger story here. So is Laird suggesting that the TMO has a hidden agenda? It kind of seems that way, yeah. You see, Laird points out that there are other organizations and individuals out there teaching very similar meditation techniques, but they're not being sued. Oh. Yeah. The technique is called Bhavatit Dhyana, and it's being taught under different names without any legal issues. But the TMO seems to be specifically targeting people associated with two specific organizations, the Institute of Professional Meditation Teachers, that's IPMT, and then there's the International Teachers of Meditation Association, or ITMA. Okay, so why single out those groups? What's the connection? That's the question Laird is asking. He suggests this might all stem from the TAMO's history with two of the defendants, Gary Benner and Brian Lee. They're both founders of IPMT, and they used to be officers of ITMA. And uh, they've had some legal run-ins with the TMO before. Wait, so these guys have tangled with the TMO before? What happened? Well, for example, Gary Benner actually won a lawsuit against the Maharishi Foundation in New Zealand. It was over a domain name. Oh. Yeah. And Brian Lee is involved in another legal action against some TMO leaders in New Zealand, actually. So there's definitely some history there, some tension. So... These two have been thorns in the TMO side for a while. It seems that way. <laughs> and that's why Laird is questioning their motives in this lawsuit. He thinks it could be about punishing these individuals for speaking out and uh, challenging their authority. So it's not just about meditation techniques and copyrights. It's about power. Yeah. It's about control and who gets to have a voice. It's a power struggle. Makes you think. We're talking about potential abuse of power and the suppression of dissenting voices and all of it stemming from a GoFundMe campaign. It's fascinating how these things connect, isn't it? It really is. And we need to understand what's at stake here. 
not just for these individuals, but for anyone who cares about freedom of speech and holding powerful organizations accountable. I agree. It's a story that needs to be told. This case really shines a light on the challenges individuals face when they go up against these huge organizations like the TMO, you know, classic underdog story. Mm -hmm. And the consequences could reach way beyond this particular case. That's true. This isn't just about these individuals. It brings up those big questions, you know, mm. about freedom of speech and uh, the right to investigate and expose practices, even if it's within an organization that seems harmless at first glance. Absolutely. And that's what makes David Laird's perspective so interesting here. Remember, he spent decades at The Economist. Right. So he's seen how power dynamics work. He's seen these big institutions try to protect their image. And in his piece, he argues that what the TMO is doing seems way out of proportion to the uh, you know alleged offenses. So he thinks they're overreacting. He seems to think so. Mm. Like he points out that even if these people are cleared of everything, they've probably already gone through years of legal battles, financial pressure. Yeah. The process itself becomes the punishment, even if they're innocent. That's pretty scary. Like, they're being punished just for questioning the TMO. Yeah, that's exactly Laird's point. He even questions whether the TMO is doing this as a tactic to discourage anyone else from uh, scrutinizing them in the future. And, and he also brings up the fact that the TMO seems to be going after people linked to IPMT and ITMA specifically, while others teaching similar meditation techniques are, uh, you know, operating without any problems. That is weird. If they were just protecting their trademarks or whatever, wouldn't they go after anyone using similar techniques? You'd think so, right? Makes you wonder if there's something else going on beneath the surface. So what you're saying is Laird thinks this lawsuit is less about legal stuff and more about silencing dissent and stopping anyone from looking into the TMO. But if people are too scared to speak up or investigate because they might get sued, what does that say about us? Big question, right? Laird argues that if these powerful organizations can just use their resources to bully people who are, you know, just exercising their right to investigate, to speak out, mm -hmm. it really chills free speech. And that chilling effect could impact a lot of things. I mean, if people are afraid to talk, who will hold these powerful groups accountable? Exactly. Laird's saying this case is about more than just this one legal fight. It's about protecting the right to question, to challenge, to hold the powerful accountable. There's a bigger public interest at stake. It is unsettling. Makes you think, has something like this happened before? Well, Laird brings up the Mick Jagger case, Ooh. you know, when he was sentenced to prison for drug possession. Yeah, oh yeah. Now, it's a totally different situation, but Laird sees a similarity in uh, how excessive the punishment seems. A lot of people thought Jagger's sentence was way too harsh for what he did, like they were making an example of him. So he's comparing that to how these investigators are being targeted. Exactly. He's suggesting this lawsuit might be more about sending a message than actual legal infringements. Like, don't mess with the TMO or you'll pay the price. Trying to scare off anyone else who might speak up. That's one way to look at it. And here's another interesting point. This is all happening in the digital age, right? Yeah. Information spreads so fast. Imagine if lawsuits like this became normal. It could silence people on a huge scale. Yikes. That's a scary thought. If we can't question, if we can't challenge, we all lose out. Really makes you think about power, you know, and what it means for us regular folks if we want to speak out against some big institution. It really does. Yeah. And it makes you think about the importance of this GoFundMe. It's not just about helping these specific people with their legal battle. It's about something bigger. Right. This goes way beyond meditation or copyright. It's about defending the right to ask questions to investigate. Exactly. And the fact that they're up against this huge, wealthy organization, it's just... It's worrying. It's a real David and Goliath situation. Hmm. Makes you wonder, what can we do when we see something wrong happening? Especially if speaking out could get you sued. It's a tough one. I mean, it's normal to feel intimidated, powerless even. But there are things we can do. Like supporting this GoFundMe. Exactly. Donating to legal defense funds, spreading the word about cases like this, talking about the importance of free speech, it all helps. It's kind of like what we're doing right now, isn't it? Having this conversation, exploring these ideas, getting people thinking. Exactly. The more we know about these things, the better we can navigate them and, uh, you know, push for change. Well said. So to wrap up this deep dive, let's turn it over to our listeners. What are your thoughts on all of this? Have you ever thought about what happens when a big organization uses lawsuits to silence people? Does that sit right with you? This case really shows us how hard it is to hold these powerful groups accountable. 
and how important it is to protect the people who speak truth to power. You know, it's a reminder that our voices still matter, even in a world full of huge institutions and corporations. Absolutely. We've covered a lot today, from the GoFundMe itself to the lawsuit to these bigger questions about free speech and investigative journalism. And it seems like this David versus Goliath story is far from over. Yeah. It really, this is one final thought, something to chew on. What happens if these kinds of lawsuits, you know, where they use the legal system to silence dissent, what if that becomes the norm? especially now when information travels so fast. It's a question worth thinking about, because if we lose the ability to speak our minds, to challenge the people in charge, we all lose. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive, everyone. Keep those questions coming.